Hemostasis and Anemia, Part 2C. So some of the signs and symptoms of hemolytic anemias um, are similar to other anemias because you get a decrease in your red blood cells, you have a decrease in oxygen being carried to your tissues, which is hypoxia. Um, you get activation of the GSR whenever you have a decrease in oxygen. And you also get signs of your body trying to replace these red blood cells. And these are some things that we talked about last time um, in class, like an increase in reticulocytes, those um, immature red blood cells. You may get an increase in red blood cell production in your bone marrow. That may lead to bone pain and an increase um, an increased risk of fracture because the insides of your bones are kind of thinning out to accommodate that increase in your red blood cells. Some of the signs and symptoms that are unique to hemolytic anemias are this increase in the amount of hemoglobin that's released from the red blood cells that are being destroyed um, or lysed. So red blood cells in hemolytic anemias, they can be lysed or broken in the capillaries that are inside the spleen, or they can be broken in the capillaries outside of the spleen. So when these red blood cells are broken in the capillaries inside of the spleen, the hemoglobin is processed into bilirubin and biliverdin, just like normal. And, but because there's an increase in the number of cells that are lysed or broken, because this is a hemolytic anemia, you get an increase in the bilirubin and an increase in the biliverdin. And so really we're, we're looking at this bilirubin because there is like, there's going to be an increase in the amount of bilirubin that's going to be released into your blood. And so we term this bilirubinemia. So this excess in bilirubin is going to build up in the blood and the excess in bilirubin is going to pass into the urine, which is not normal. And so this is going to result in bilirubinuria. So you'll have an excess in, of bilirubin in the blood and also in the urine. So know these terms, bilirubinemia and bilirubinuria. So the urine is, is dark brown. But one thing I want to point out is that the blood serum is yellow, which is normal for blood serum. And that's because the red blood cells are breaking inside the spleen. Bilirubin can also deposit under the skin, which causes jaundice, and also in the eyes, which is called icterus. And so because you have all this extra bilirubin floating around in your circulatory system, it can be deposited and show up at various places in your body. Um, so because you get this increase in red blood cells that are breaking or being lysed inside the spleen, your spleen is being overworked. And when your spleen is overworked, it becomes enlarged. And so this is common in these hemolytic anemias. And when your spleen is enlarged, it's called splenomegaly. Because you have an increase in bilirubin, that bilirubin reaches, eventually reaches the liver. And from the normal process that we just discussed, we know that the bilirubin is going to be converted to bile once it reaches the liver. 
And so we have an increase in bilirubin going to the liver. The liver is going to be overworked. And so that liver may also increase in size, which is termed hepatomegaly. And so when we have both the spleen and the liver being overworked and their size is increased, we call that hepatosplenomegaly. And so hepatosplenomegaly um, is going to be an, uh, another complication of these hemolytic, uh, excuse me, these hemolytic anemias where we have the red blood cells that are lysing inside the spleen. Also, we're going to have an increase or activation of our GSR, which is going to result in the increased heart rate and also an increase of the release of immature red blood cells in the circulation. So this is a, a figure where you can see the um, normal color of the urine and then in bilirubinemia because we have that extra bilirubin that's going to be filtered out when it reaches the kidneys going to be filtered out of the blood into the kidneys and resulting in that dark brown um, color of the urine. Um, jaundice we have the bilirubin depositing um, in the skin causing a yellowing of the skin and then we see here um, the bilirubin deposited in the eyes where you have yellowing of the eyes or icterus. Um, this shows you the difference between the normal size of a spleen and an enlarged spleen. Overworked because of all that lysing of the red blood cells. And again, hepatomegaly, enlargement of the liver. You can just see this liver that's just so big compared to the normal liver. And it's due to just over being overworked by all that excess bilirubin that it has to convert into bile. So if red blood cells break in the capillaries outside of the spleen, it's going to cause a little different situation. The hemoglobin that's released from those red blood cells is going to be released into the bloodstream. And the blood serum is going to be red instead of normally the normal yellow color. And because then you'll have hemoglobin in the blood serum, this is referred to hemoglobinemia. So the hemoglobin um, can also pass into the liver because we have hemoglobin in the blood. When that blood reaches the kidneys, I'm sorry, not the liver, but the kidneys, it's going to be filtered out of the, the kidneys and pass into the urine. And so now we'll have hemo, hemoglobinuria where um, it's it's very dark because of the hemoglobin and it's termed black water. And so on the, on, in this figure here, you can see the very dark urine and, or the hemoglobinuria. And then over here on this side, you can see the, the blood or the hemoglobin that's in the blood serum is red instead of the normal um, straw colored or yellow colored um, blood serum. The problem with hemoglobinuria and hemoglobinemia um, when it's in the blood is that hemoglobin can damage the kidneys. So if you have a lot of hemoglobin being filtered out by your kidneys, it can damage the kidneys. Um, so let's go back here through this process. So the hemoglobin is released into the bloodstream because the, the red blood cells are being broken in capillaries outside of the spleen. The hemoglobin passes into the urine and causes this very dark um, urine, hemoglobinuria. And 
once the hemoglobin reaches the spleen, when it finally reaches the spleen and is converted into bilirubin, then bilirubin levels can also increase. And so then it can also result in bilirubinemia, um, bilirubinuria, jaundice, icterus, splenomegaly, and hepatomegaly can also develop. The same symptoms, signs that we saw when those red blood cells are broken in capillaries inside the spleen. So the difference here is that when the red blood cells break outside the spleen, we have hemoglobin being released from those red blood cells. And hemoglobin ends up in the blood, in the blood serum, and also in the urine. And hemoglobin is very bad and very damaging to the kidneys. So I have a question for you that I'd like for you to be able to answer. Is it better for red blood cells to lice in the spleen or outside of the spleen? And why is that?